Hello there, I'm Louise Worsick and I'd like to share with you today um, a progress report on some work we're doing at the University of Southampton around uh, quality of end of life care for children, uh, work that's led by uh, Professor Anne-Sophie Darlington and my colleague Kathleen Hunt. So we know that research over recent years around paediatric end of life care has been aimed towards the best possible quality of life for children and their families. This has been achieved to some extent and we're now in a position to evaluate the improvements that have been put in place um, and measure outcomes for families of children that have died. Uh, we're aware of outcomes research that's measuring quality of end of life care for children, but where our research sits in, in, in this uh, body of work is that we're exploring quality of life measured after death um, through parent and carer feedback. In order to do this, we're adapting a validated research instrument that's been used with bereaved families and carers of adults who've died. The Voices short form is a, is a measure that's been used with adults and it's been used extensively since about 2011 uh, with the uh, Office for National Statistics and NHS England in national surveys around quality of end of life care for adults. Our research looks at trying to develop that questionnaire, the, the Voices short form for use with children, um, for use with bereaved parents. Our process for doing this started with the generation of issues. We wanted to understand what the things were that we needed to ask parents about. So we did a scientific review of the literature. We asked health professionals um, their views, and we also asked parents through cognitive interviews. Uh, we've then used this um, information to adapt the questionnaire before pre-testing that again through cognitive interviews with health professionals and parents. So the, the literature review and the health care professional interviews and parent interviews revealed many issues, which you can see on this slide. Um, I'll highlight a few of them. We've got continuity of care, the importance of the role of parents in end of life care, trust in healthcare professionals, care for parents, the importance of touch, and the importance of support for siblings. So we've distilled these issues, um, mapped them onto the existing questionnaire, the Voices um, short form, um, to create the Voices for Children. And this is now in three distinct um, forms. There's the outside of hospital settings as we describe them. So there's a section around care at home, urgent and out of hours care, and care provided by community nurses and other healthcare professionals in the community. And there's a, a section that covers the inpatient settings and hospice. So we're, we're asking about care provided in the um, neonatal intensive care and paediatric intensive care and the paediatric ward and hospices. And then there's a section um, around end of life care. We ask specifically about the, the experiences in the last two days, about the hours surrounding death and about planning care, um, advanced planning in particular. So just to remind you where we are in this presentation, we're going to uh, present to you now the results of the findings of the analysis of the cognitive interviews with healthcare professionals. The purpose of these cognitive interviews was to get an understanding from healthcare professionals and subsequently the ones that we'll do with brief parents regarding the draft questionnaire. We wanted to understand how easy it was to complete about the ordering and structure and format of the questions, about whether the content was right, whether there were any missing items. And we wanted to know about how easy it was to understand and about its acceptability and sensitivity. So as I've said, we're, we're presenting the results of the interviews with the healthcare professionals here. Uh, we did a content analysis and we did a thematic analysis. The content analysis um, findings are listed on this slide here. So there were comments about structural changes that needed to be made, which have been made in fact. Um, we've added an introduction page based upon the suggestions made by the healthcare professionals. 
we've added an introductory question to lead into the questionnaire about your child, which asks the parents to talk, tell us a little bit about their child rather than going straight in and with, with quite blunt questions. And then there were several siblings questions um, in different sections of the questionnaire, but the healthcare professionals suggested to us that they should, they would sit better in a section on their own. So there's a separate, separate section called brothers and sisters. There's, there's content changes that we've made, quite a few of them, but one that I'm going to focus on here is a, a change we made around care at home. We, we'd asked um, a question about the uh, care that was provided at home and, and um, the healthcare professionals fed back to us that that question was uh, really difficult to understand. It wasn't clear whether we were asking about um, the role of the healthcare professional in delivering the care or whether we were asking about the services that were being provided and supposed to be provided. So we took a step back and thought, well, what is it we want to understand from this question? and decided to base our, the structure of our question on the recommendations made in the NICE guidelines about care at home. And therefore we've completely restructured that question um, around care at home. And then there are some changes we haven't yet made because we want to ask the parents about what they think about these questions like, do you know what we mean by key healthcare professionals? What, what is understood by in a caring way, et cetera. And then there were a few things we wanted to go back to the healthcare professionals about themselves um, around understanding of terminology. Move now on to the thematic analysis of the interviews with healthcare professionals. Um, our thematic analysis demonstrated an overarching theme of respect. And sitting underneath that theme were three sub themes, each of them around language. The first one was around clarity of language. It was about being clear about the roles of the healthcare professionals, what they did and didn't do, and about the scope of provision of services, again, who did what. The next theme was about the sensitivity of the use of language. Um, they pointed out the tendency to mislead or cause offence, which was obviously unintentional, but we needed to be really careful about the words that we were using in terms of sensitivity. And it showed their deep respect for the status of the respondents as bereaved parents. They, they were desperate to avoid distress for them. And then lastly, there was, there was the language of shared understanding. The healthcare professionals were really aware of the fact that they, as we all do, use jargon and organisational jargon and uh, medical terminology in our language amongst our professionals. But we needed, we all needed to, to be aware of that and make sure that we used neutral language when speaking with um, patients and parents. I just want to explain now how we reached those themes based upon the data we got from the interviews. Those are the three themes outlined on this slide. And for each of them, I've applied one of the questions that we asked in the questionnaire that led to the development of that theme along with the, the, the replies to other questions in the questionnaire. And so, for example, when asked um, about your experience of urgent care out of hours, one of the responses was, that there could be different meanings or understandings of urgent care. Does it include a call to the physio or a call to the hospital to get admitted? Uh, when asked, um, was she looked after in a caring way? Responses were things like, does it imply that parents are not worried about care? Does it refer to trust or comfort? And um, these sorts of responses led us to that development of that theme around sensitive use of language. And then thirdly, the language of shared understanding. There were comments such as trust is a challenging thing. And also trust is a massive thing if children are going to die. When, when asked, did you place your trust in healthcare professionals? That, I hope, shows you the methods that we used in order to get to the um, themes um, from, for the thematic analysis. And so to conclude, a summary of the findings, um, the healthcare professionals illustrated a strong sense of empathy towards the parents. They were deeply, deeply respectful towards them. They stressed to us the importance of care with words. And there was an awareness of their own language in practice and the need to avoid jargon 
in communication with parents and their representatives. So um, to also summarize the strong emphasis on language was around clarity, sensitivity, and understanding. But overall, the healthcare professionals uh, led us to get, get a much deeper understanding of the impact of our questions on the parents that we would be asking next in this research. Thank you very much for listening. I'd like to also thank all the, uh, the healthcare professionals who participated in interviews with us. Uh, the uh, contact details of their team there are there on that last slide. Thanks very much for listening.